All right, welcome back to another episode of the Podium Pusher podcast. As always, my name is Justin, here with Brandon. We're ready to talk about the Chinese Grand Prix weekend, not just the race. We had sprint race, sprint quality, all of the things. So much happened this weekend. It was the first Chinese Grand Prix in half a decade, and we've got stuff to talk about. Brandon, how the heck you feeling? I'm feeling great. It was an awesome uh, weekend. There was a lot of exciting stuff that happened, and... Yeah, it was a really fun fun weekend to watch. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be here and talking about it and uh, made me excited for the rest of the season too. I heard a lot of people talking online saying that this was a boring race. And yes, maybe the Grand Prix itself didn't live up to some standards that I think were still spoiled from 2021 on. But the sprint race was probably the best racing we've seen all year. I thought it was incredible. And overall, I just thought China as a track was great for the weekend. It was very low grip, had a new surface. There was unpredictability. We had some rain thrown in this, so there was even more unpredictability. I thought it was great. I thought it was a really good return to China, the atmosphere, the fans, how they honored Joe. I just thought it was a great weekend all around. I think some people are being a little negative. If anybody besides Max Verstappen won, we'd be like, race of the decade. It's going to win awards in six years when we get to 2030. But I thought it was a great return to China, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. It was, uh, you know, I totally agree. I think the sprint race was the best racing we've seen um, so far this year. And, and we got to watch that together, which was pretty cool. And um, yeah, China, like, you know, kind of said leading up to the race, it's a, I think it's a great track. It has a lot of unique qualities uh, to it. And I think it provided some pretty good racing. Um, you know, I, I will, will admit that, you know, the front of the Grand Prix was a little bit uh boring with max kind of racing straight from pole to the win but you know great job by max you know he he deserved the win um but yeah it was a good good track and definitely provided a lot of exciting moments um so it was, it was a great weekend yeah we were hanging out to watch the sprint race we started lap one sitting on the couch by turn one we were about two feet from the tv <laughs> and proceeded to stand there for the next 16 laps until the very end in which we returned to our seats on the couch what was your one sentence rundown for this weekend in China? My one sentence rundown um, is Lando Norris. He drove the wheels up car in the Grand Prix, and he got another P two finish. Um, you know, uh, at some point, Lando's got to win a race, right? It's it's not going to be in China this weekend, uh, but uh, I think Lando had a great drive, and that was the biggest performance that stuck out to me over the course of the weekend. Um, I'll talk about him more a little bit later in his whole whole weekend. But yeah, I just thought he had a really good Grand Prix, um, took advantage of some good opportunities in the race and, you know, put himself in a great position and ended up finishing P2. So it, it was a great drive by Lando. It was a great drive by Lando on Sunday. And because I know you're going to talk about it more later to praise him, I'll talk about it some about his Saturday because it's just another situation of Lando Norris being in a situation where he could win a race. I know it was a sprint race, and part of me is glad that he didn't win because I don't want his first win to be a sprint race. It seems kind of weird when that happens. But he was on pole. Lewis Hamilton ends up going up the inside turn one. Atlanta just over-aggressive move on the outside, and it just made no sense to me because he very easily could have hung back and then made the move later on that lap we know that mercedes is slow as heck in a straight line it was very clear that there was no pace in that car and lando norris could have very easily gotten by lewis later Uh, i don't know if he would have won it would have at least been a guaranteed p2 with the way fernando was holding up everybody else um but it seems like it was lando's fault that he didn't secure better results in the sprint race yeah yeah i definitely think that was a big mistake from lando um and you know it's something we have seen before um, but it, it, you know, when I was watching it happen and kind of thinking about it afterwards, it kind of reminded me of that, uh, that over eagerness and aggression we kind of saw from Max Verstappen pre winning his first world championship. You know, Max obviously won a few races before he won his first world championship. And even, even like prior to the 2021 season, Max had won a few races. Um, so a little bit different of a scenario than what Lando's in right now, but I think I think with Lando, there's just some like eagerness, like when when he's right on the cusp. There's there's a little bit that 
he he just kind of pushes too far because it's so close to him. You know, he's so close to achieving, you know, uh, the next big goal in his career, you know. So um, I think that's kind of what we're seeing. And I expect that Lando will like settle down once he finds just one win, just like a little bit of success. I think we're, we'll see him settle down a little bit and we'll see a lot more success from him because of that. Um, he just hasn't been in the position enough to learn, I would think. But I mean, obviously this is the first time we've talked about it. It's not the first time we've seen something like this from Lando, but I think he needs just a little bit more experience. Yeah, you could definitely make the argument that they're racing at the pinnacle of motorsports, so it shouldn't be a learning curve while you're there. The learning should have happened in the junior formula and you should be able to capitalize on the opportunities that are presented to you. I don't want to go far enough to say that this is a trend in Lando Norris's career yet. I think a lot of people, their first piece of evidence is Russia 2021. Clearly that was outside of his control. That was a 50-50 call on the wets. If it went the other way, we would have been praising him as a genius and we would have already seen Lando Norris win a race. I still think a Lando Norris race win is coming. I think he's one of the best drivers on the grid. When he has these opportunities, we saw it the very next day on Sunday that when there are opportunities presented to him in situations that aren't necessarily for a win, but still for good points and outperforming where he should be, he still capitalizes on it. You know, he should not have gotten P2 in that Grand Prix. He should have been P3 behind Sergio Perez and everybody knows that. And so I, I still think Lando is at the top of the sport. I am not ready to call this a trend that he cracks under pressure. Lando no wins. I'm not ready to go there yet. I still think he's going to win a race soon. I think it probably will happen in 2024. I think if the opportunity presents itself later in the year, I do. I could see Lando Norris winning a race this season. That's uh, not an official prediction, just a I could see it type deal. Uh, but yeah, I'm not ready to say that Lando Norris can't perform at the top level yet. No, it's still early in his career. I don't think there's as much evidence against him as people are saying, and I still think he's one of the best. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I think, I think you know, we're just seeing a little bit of his, I don't know, inexperience or youthfulness come out in, in those major opportunities. You know, and and again, like all these calls that you, know, you think about Russia 2021, and you think about, um, you know, uh, even like Monza 2021 when he and Daniel finished one two. Like Lando had the pace in that car, um, you know, he could have chosen to fight Daniel for that win and possibly could have won that race, you know. Um, but you know, he obeyed team orders there, and he, even now, you know, the call to just be really aggressive on that turn, uh, it you know, in a turn one, it's like, you know, maybe he thought that was the right move in the moment. He was just making a quick decision, and and we can't judge him his entire you know, racing career off of like three, four, five split second decisions. But anyway, yeah, Lando's a great driver, but it was an awesome weekend from him. Another one of those situations that it's really easy for us to look back on and say that was the wrong move. But if he had stuck it around the outside and won that race, we'd all be praising him and overtake of the season. And so it just one of those things that could have gone either way. He probably was over eager, but that's just how it goes and you can look back on it with hindsight but it does flow very smoothly into my one sentence rundown that i think this weekend proved that the new sprint format is better than the old one i still don't think it's perfect i still think that there are improvements that can be made to the format the weekend still feels kind of disjointed as like there's two things going on not leading towards one grand prix but that's okay i think this was way better i think the fact that they had the sprint race before qualifying for the may grand prix I think that improved the flow of the weekend. I think the excitement of the sprint race being in the morning and then being like, oh, we've still got qualifying. There's still things to look forward to. Like there's a whole Grand Prix weekend ahead. I think that was really exciting. Uh, I, I, so I think this format was improved and I am happy with the way that sprints are heading. Yeah, me too. I think it, it like just kind of getting to experience the, uh, the sprint uh, on, I guess, what was that Friday night for us? Um, uh, yeah, it, it was a, a major improvement and just, you know, the, the shift from what it was when it started out to where it is now, it's just such a major improvement. And, uh, you know, I do think there are a couple more tweaks that, that can be made to the sprint format and, uh, just kind of blow the weekend together, you know, create a better fan experience, a better driving experience, but, um, yeah, it was a major improvement, and it makes me actually excited to watch 
sprint races this year, which I haven't necessarily been super excited in the past. This is the best I've ever felt about sprint races. Yeah, here's here's the tweak. Everybody lean in close for this one. Get rid of it. Stop doing them. All right, that's a controversial <laughs> take from Justin. I won't dive into that today, but that's just my thoughts. Yeah, I think I think it's better for sure, and definitely the evolution from 2021 to what it is now. There has been improvement. I think it's doing a better job of balancing entertainment and, spect- and actual sportsmanship. Um, but it is a little weird that we have another sprint race next time out at Miami. It's one of those things where... There's only six, and it's kind of wanting to be a rare thing throughout the season. And then they're like, boom, boom, back to back. So that kind of yeah. takes away from the novelty of it. Maybe not the best scheduling, but I can see why they wanted to do it at both China and Miami. But we're not here to talk about scheduling. We're here to talk about the sprint format itself in my one sentence rundown. And I do think it is better. All right, let's jump into some things that happened in the Grand Prix. You know where we've got to start. That Daniel Ricciardo and Lance Stroll incident. We had the safety car come out for Valtteri Bottas. He retired with an engine incident or engine failure. And they couldn't move the car, which was kind of funny to watch. I think they were a little slow to throw that VSC and then eventual safety car. You got people out there on the track risking their lives to move that car. They were a little slow with that. But once they threw it, Got the car off. It's time for a restart. Little lockup from Fernando Alonso. Sees his teammate Lance Stroll looking at the apex, not paying attention, running on the back of Daniel Ricciardo, ruin his race. I think the big thing that have come from this is the penalties that were handed out. Lance Stroll kind of seems like he got off easier than Daniel Ricciardo did. Obviously, Daniel's penalty was for overtaking Nico Hulkenberg after Nico Hulkenberg had overtaken him during the incident. It was kind of a mess. Very unfortunate penalty for Daniel. What do you think? Should Lance have been punished harder? Did Daniel deserve the penalty? What are you feeling around that? It's tough with Daniel's penalty. Uh, it's it's a really unfortunate situation, you know, all around. But with with Daniel's penalty, did he break the official rule? Yes. So they were absolutely within their bounds to penalize him for that. But. Had the incident not happened at all, Daniel wouldn't have done that, you know. So, all I'm trying to say is it's Lance's fault, basically. But, um, but you know, so so Daniel's penalty is unfortunate. But yes, he did break the rules. So, at some level, I think you got to say that yes, that is fair. However, I think a lot of fault can be driven back to Lance Stroll. So do I think that Lance should have gotten a comparable penalty for that, for causing that? Um, I think so. I think you can penalize Daniel for what he did, but I think you also need to penalize the person who caused the incident and the aftermath of the incident, which is, you know, what Daniel's being penalized for at the same level. Um, You know, Lance got a 10 second time penalty, but, you know, that doesn't help Daniel at all. It doesn't help uh, RB at all. So it's like, you know, seems a little unfair, but it, it does seem like a lot of this was stemmed from Lance's inability to uh, manage what was going on in front of him. So. Yeah, we might have seen Lance Stroll begin to expire his time on Formula One. I think he's been doing that for years, but he's got the contract for as long as he wants, so he'll just be in that seat and we'll see him racing in that Aston Martin until 2050, I guess. Um, it's t- It's a really tough situation because it's hard to, you know, they always say that outcome does not determine severity of punishment, but it's hard because you think Daniel's race is ruined and Lance was already down at the back of the field, so a 10-second penalty does nothing to him and Daniel having a three-place grid penalty for the next race is, you know, seems like a harsher punishment because... Lance's race was already ruined and you know I think the only time I can think of this penalty is like Imola 2021 when Sergio Perez went off and then re-overtook the people but like he made the mistake and then did it and Daniel it was Lance's fault and then he was like two feet behind Nico and then re-overtook him so it was just weird and yes Daniel did break the letter of the law so the penalty is fair what really seems crazy to me is that Fernando Alonso at the end of the sprint race, was given a penalty and got three penalty points 
for that penalty, which was just like racing with Carlos Sainz. We watched it with our own two eyes, saw it live. It was like the smallest of touches, and they were racing. Both of them sent kind of crazy moves on each other, and it was the smallest of touches on a textbook racing incident. He gets three penalty points, and Lance Stroll gets two for sending Daniel Ricciardo across the ocean into Japan. Like, you sent him back to Suzuka, and he gets two penalty points. Fernando Alonso gets three. That makes no sense to me. I think we've seen it already this year that there's been some inconsistency from the FIA. We've seen it for the past couple years. Um, So I think that's my biggest issue with with this is the inconsistency rather than the penalties themselves. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And, I mean, even taking out the Fernando incident, the the fact that he got three penalty points for that is wild or was that he was even penalized at all was wild you know i i thought that it was great racing from him and carlos in in that incident and you know anyway not my decision but yeah there's definitely inconsistencies and even taking that fernando situation out of it there's inconsistencies within you know the lance and daniel incident so um and then you know i unfortunately you know it's a heated moment after the race and uh i don't think lance handled it well and in turn you know that frustrated daniel and he probably didn't handle it the best either um but it is what it is we move on and we hope hope for daniel to get some points next time out in miami saving grace of it is is that daniel's penalty i believe is just for the sprint rates um I, I don't think it's for the full Grumpy. I could be wrong on that, but um, if that's true, then there's at least a little bit of a silver lining there. Yeah, I'm like 99% sure it's for the sprint race as well. I saw that in like an Instagram comment and then doing prep for this podcast, I was trying to look it up and everything said, for the Miami Grand Prix weekend. And I was like, tell me which race in the weekend, but nothing <laughs> would. But I am like 99% sure it's for the sprint because that is what comes next. Sprint points are top eight. RB probably wasn't going to score points anyway. So realistically, not that big of a deal. Just be a, a good chance to gather some data for the Grand Prix, but very, very inconsistent penalties just all around this weekend. Speaking of inconsistencies, what the heck is going on at Mercedes? We saw Lewis finish P2 in the sprint only to have like three hours later finish P18 and quality for the race, ended up bringing it up to P9, which is a great comeback drive, but that's where that car should be, so you could say it's not that impressive with the DNFs that happened in front of him. I'm not here to say if it was an impressive drive or not. It's just what happened. And then you have George Russell, who kind of had an inverse, who got knocked out in SQ2 and then had a solid race on his own to pick up a good haul of points. So very up-and-down weekend for Mercedes. What is going on inside that team? I don't know. I mean, we talked about it last weekend, but I think this is truly a display that kind of shows they don't understand their car. You know, um, yes, China is a new track they haven't been to before. They have a car that seems relatively inconsistent in general, and they don't seem to have a fantastic understanding of the car. Um, So I guess it's not all that surprising that they were hot and cold this weekend, but I think it it just kind of shows that you know, they don't understand how to get the balance right, how to get the setup right. Uh, maybe they're taking feedback from both Lewis and George, trying to incorporate that into the setups. Um, but it was interesting to watch the just wildly different results that they got over the course of the weekend. Um, but to me, it just is a lack of understanding of how the car performs and all that. But Yeah, it for sure has to be... Uh, they don't understand the car type of situation. I will say, before we can get any allegations that we are Lewis Hamilton haters, I think it probably still overall was a good weekend for him. You know, that rain came down, and he showed why he's one of the best on the grid, putting that thing P2 in sprint qualifying, and then had the best sprint race that he possibly could to keep it in P2 and, you know, bring home a lot of points for himself and the team. And then having a good recovery race, there was chaos in the midfield that we saw, and he kept himself clean, drove back up there. George had a solid weekend. And so even for having these 
inconsistencies and for Mercedes to have a bad weekend again. You know, they picked up some points. Both drivers scored in both races. And so, you know, for a bad weekend, Mercedes are doing all right. They'll have a battle with Aston Martin probably for P4, P5, and the constructors. Uh, They're bringing some upgrades to Miami, so it'll be interesting to see if they can start getting the car in the right direction, have a better understanding for the car in this next Grand Prix. But they're going to be all right. You know, we, we keep expecting Mercedes to get there. They were this team that won so many championships in a row. I don't know if them getting there will be in this regulation or the next regulations, but they'll figure it out. I'm not too worried. It's definitely something like, you know, I definitely classify both of us as more like Red Bull fans, that kind of thing. But, you know, it is it is something cool to watch and in sport in general of just like, when a team or a person is just so great, just performs with such excellence, there is a little bit of a desire to just see them be successful a little bit more, you know, to kind of see them be able to relive the quote unquote glory days or the, you know, the best moments that they've had. So um, I'm definitely excited for whenever that happens, when Mercedes gets back to the top. And then we'll see Carlos Sainz, world champion. I'm just kidding. Who was your <laughs> podium pusher for the weekend this time out in China? Um, my podium pusher is Lando Norris. Like I said earlier, I was going to talk about him a little bit more. But outside of the practice session, uh, he was P6 or higher in every single session. And I guess what you, you would call all the competitive sessions of the weekend. He got that massive sprint pull. The rain came down. Lando performed the best. Um, so that was really cool to watch. And then, you know, a little bit, little bit of a slip up in the sprint race itself, but still scored a P6, which is a great, you know, haul of points for him and, and the team. And he also outqualified Oscar on both opportunities, um, you know, which is a great, great thing for Lando personally. And it just, you know, um, also gives Oscar something to work towards as well. So I think it was a great weekend for McLaren, a great weekend for Lando in general. Uh, obviously, the big P2 finish we already talked about, but it, w- it was awesome. It was a great weekend for him. Yeah, a good weekend for Lando Norris for sure. After the sprint, things were looking a little rough, but he redeemed himself, managed to get P2, and I do think it was solid driving. You can't judge his weekend based on that one mistake and obviously with the way the points are you still got to put more weight on the Grand Prix so if you had to pick which race you wanted him to finish P2 in clearly you would pick the Grand Prix over the sprint maybe a little bit of a concerning weekend for Oscar Piastri he was pretty far off Lando Norris I think he finished like 43 or 48 seconds behind him in the Grand Prix which is not great we saw in the past, specifically throughout last year, that Oscar Piastri just wasn't on top of the tires in a lot of races. And I guess with China being so new and having a new surface and just being so slippery, that probably wasn't great for a driver that's been struggling with tire issues. But yeah, having that big of a gap to your teammate is not great. Could be a little concerning for Oscar Piastri. I was hoping that he would have maybe that issue figured out a little bit more this year, uh, but he's not there yet. Uh, I'm not ready to push the panic button on Oscar. He's still been having a very good year, and he's had some standout performances, I think, back to especially Saudi Arabia. Uh, But slightly concerning weekend for Oscar Piastri, for sure. Yeah, I think this is a bit of a down weekend for Oscar, but uh, I fully expect him to bounce back. You know, uh, we saw later in the year, last year, him have some really good performances. So hopefully he can repeat that again this year. So we'll see. Who was your... Podium pusher of the weekend, Justin. My podium pusher of the weekend is Max Verstappen. It has been a while since I've said Max Verstappen because I've wanted to shine some light on other people in this section, but there's no one else for this weekend. Obviously, he did not get sprint pole in that crazy wet qualifying conditions, but once he got to the lead, he just bolted. I mean, that gap he finished with in the sprint race with only being in the lead for 13 laps was insane. Obviously, in the main race, pull to win, never in doubt. I mean, this is just a very dominant weekend from him. It's one of those races where there's not much to say about Max because he 
It just ran off in the distance. There was never a chance that anybody was going to catch him. Sergio Perez had a good weekend, but it wasn't a competing with Max weekend. Uh, so great weekend for Max Verstappen. He is my podium pusher. Yeah, it was an awesome weekend for Max. Another dominant showing from him. Um, something that we'll uh, probably experience many more times this season. So, yeah. Who is your back marker of the weekend? Uh, my back marker of the weekend is going to be Lance Stroll. Um, obviously, we talked about him crashing into Daniel, the penalty he got there. Um, he was P15 in sprint quali, P14 in the sprint. He did not, um, he qualified P11 um, for the main race, which isn't terrible, uh, but then he finished P15 in the race. So, so, you know, again, I think it's just another showing of Lance not getting as much out of the car as Fernando did. Uh, Fernando qualified P3 for the main race, um, which obviously Fernando got a ton out of that car. And that was awesome to watch him in quality, but, you know, with uh, Lance just, not being able to get up there and qualifying, they're kind of losing out on opportunities to get both cars in the points. Um, uh, because you know, Fernando was able to qualify high, and then as the race went on, he kind of fell back a little bit. But you know, same thing is happening for Lance. Um, is you know, question becomes why is he falling back from P11 when that's probably roundabout where that car should be? So, uh, I don't think it was a great weekend from Lance. Yeah, we've already talked about it a lot, but yeah, tough weekend for Lance. Said it before, I'll say it again. If they're serious about winning championships at Aston Martin, he simply cannot continue to be the driver there much longer. My back marker of the weekend is Yuki Sonoda coming off a great home Grand Prix. He proceeded to have a bit of a dud in China, P19 in both qualifying sessions. He hadn't lost to Daniel in qualifying all year, and then it happened both times this weekend. So that's not great for him. Didn't really have any pace in the sprints, but RB was never going to score points there in anyways. And then taken out in the race by Kevin Magnuson just to pour some salt in the wound of a bad weekend, but he wasn't on for points and was behind Daniel in the race as well. So just not a great weekend for Yuki Sonoda. Some things were his fault. Other things were not his fault, but not the weekend he would have liked after a really good start to the season. Yeah, definitely, definitely kind of a, maybe not a shocking weekend, but a bit of a surprising weekend for Yuki because he'd been on such good form this year. But uh, hopefully he can bounce back. Yeah, hopefully so. We made some predictions for this race. I have been behind. I needed a big weekend, and I got it. I'm back in the lead of our prediction points after this weekend. We're just going to go over our bold predictions, but if you want to see a full recap of our predictions, you can head over find it on our Instagram page. It's all there for you. I predicted that Sauber would have another pit stop over five seconds in duration, which I thought didn't happen because they didn't show it on the feed, but then I went back and looked, and it did. It was like 5.2 sure seconds it is. long. Boom, yep. we brought that one home. Different sprint and race polls. When I predicted this, I said, I don't really believe it, and then it happened. So that's two points for me. I'll take it. Yeah, definitely some great predictions. Uh, I didn't have a terrible prediction weekend but it wasn't as good as yours um my first prediction was red bull only collects a total of three podiums this weekend that did not happen um and then mclaren secure at least one podium this weekend that did happen uh, lando finished with p2 in the grand prix so secured that one for me you were you were on for that first one. You know, it looked like Sergio Perez was going to finish on that sprint podium, and we said, here we go. This is what we expected to happen, and then Fernando Alonso sent it, and Sergio Perez just snuck up the inside, got that he podium. Sure but it was a good yeah. prediction. It was one dive bomb was away close. from Fernando Alonso from being right. Maybe he did deserve those three penalty points. You know what? I changed <laughs> my mind. He should have got them for messing up your predictions. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Brandon, that is it. That is all we've got for the Chinese Grand Prix. What are your parting podium thoughts before we leave these lovely people? Uh, parting podium thoughts are uh, Formula One is back in the United States. Not this weekend, but next weekend, which is super exciting because that means all the Formula One events no longer go, go on at night for us, which is super exciting. So we can watch them live and in real time and not while we're sleeping. Um, so 
that. That is really cool. I'm excited for Miami. It's a fun track to watch racing at, and it's always a great atmosphere. So I'm excited to see how the weekend plays out. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it is going to be awesome. Formula One is back in Miami. To all of the European viewers, we feel your pain. We know you're going to be tired this weekend. There are a lot of American Formula One fans that say, hey, toughen up. We do this all year. No, it's okay. You guys are allowed to be tired. It's all good. Just enjoy Formula One. Get an energy drink. Crack it open. It's going to all be okay. Formula One is back in Miami. Hopefully it provides some good racing for us. Last year wasn't the best racing. It was a good race. We saw Max Verstappen coming through the field, and he just proceeded to you know, never lose another Grand Prix after he won that Miami race for the next 37 weeks. Uh, but hopefully the race itself is much better this year. It's still a new track, so I'm willing to give it a couple years, a couple chances uh, to see what happens. But we're back. It's going to be at a normal time, and I'm very happy about it. Me too. It's going to be a great weekend. All right, that is all we've got. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Podium Pusher podcast. As always, you can find us on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, wherever podcasts are found. Feel free to give us a like, subscribe, review, all of the things. We are very thankful for each and every one of you guys who decide to give us your time and let us talk to you about Formula One. We will see you guys in the next episode. See ya. See ya.